Hi y'all, let's talk a little bit about uh, the media, its narrative on guns, gun rights, and uh, dead kids, and whether or not the media really does care about the dead kids. Now, I know that they will tell you, of course they care about it, you know, personally it's very sad, but you know, at an operational level, it's just not true. These aren't like surgeons or law enforcement officers who are working as hard as they can to work themselves out of a job, like if if you go to any competent doctor, any really compassionate doctor, he yes, I, between my having a good-paying job and stopping all these injuries and working my, you know, not having this job anymore, I would choose not having this job anymore. I would go do something completely unrecognizable because that problem would have been solved. The media is not trying to do that. The media relies upon these tragedies. It's their cash cow. That's why the operational motto, the mantra of all news organizations is, if it bleeds, it leads. They have people who are staged, ready to go to these, and you know to to bring out oh the, the you know to to exploit your emotions, to exploit the pain and the grief of people who've been caught up in some kind of very bad tragedy, and to get the best angle on it, and then they'll pretend, oh no we really care like um you know they they want to watch the police chase from the helicopter, and when the guy gets out of the car they want to see the guy with the gun, and they want to see the cops with the guns back. And then, just as the shooting happens, oh, pull back! Oh, oh God, it's too graphic! Oh, I'm so sorry! <laughs> Advertisers! Look at the ratings we got. So let's stop this pretense of pretending that the media cares about this. They don't. They depend on it. They love that it happens, which is precisely why they are so practiced and poised eagerly to jump on these things with all the adjectives, the brutal rape, the brutal slaying, the terrible tragedy. They've got all their adjectives lined up precisely so they can milk this cash cow for every last penny. They love it. They should just own that shit. It is, if you're in the media, it is your job to get in there where tragedy is and, uh, and to craft whatever narrative you can possibly craft to drive up your company's bottom line. So stop the pretense that you care. Oh, you might personally care in your, your private life and, and your heart of hearts. <laughs> but as we know, your people have very negotiable uh, morale, very negotiable ethics. Your, your private ethics are completely irrelevant to, you, uh, to your public actions. And it's your public actions that I'm going to address. You behave in one way, stop pretending that you actually uh, in your heart of hearts or the other way. Because to the extent that it's true is precisely to the extent that it's completely irrelevant what you really actually are like privately. Uh, if if the one were related to the other, you would not behave the way that you do. Now, they, they claim that they want these gun laws that they push for to save the lives of children, notwithstanding the fact that uh, when they got everything they wanted in the assault weapons ban, uh, I think it's three DOJ reports now, uh, have, have shown that there's absolutely no uh, evidence, whatever, that it did any good at all. It didn't stop, it didn't change, uh, I'm sorry, there's no reason to suppose that it changed the frequency of events, the lethality of events, the number of rounds, it did nothing, so far as anyone can tell. All right, so clearly the stated goal, uh, the ostensible goal of saving the lives of children, is unrelated to the things they're pushing for, uh, has been shown time and time and time again by a competent analysis of the data. Now, so there's that. Uh, when a person says their stated goal is X and they want to take uh, steps Y and Z to produce X and then you, know, you show them time and again that, that these, these uh, events uh, Y and Z, these steps Y and Z, don't produce X and they say, no, we want that to produce X. They're lying to you. They know there's no relationship between the two, and even if there were a relationship between the, the things they claim they want to go after and the effects they claim they want to stop, assume that it's true, that uh, they want to get the assault guns because of, of deaths. That's complete gibberish. It's like 300, 400 people per year. They want to you know, have the sweeping legislation on assault rifles because the, the deaths produced thereby are so extensive. No, they're not. The ones produced by handguns are orders of magnitude higher. Why not go after those? Because stopping the deaths is not what they want. They have a narrative, they have an angle that they seek to pursue. 
Uh, I don't know, maybe they're trying to show that they're human, uh, they have all the real feelings that other people, I don't know. For what, I, I don't like to speculate too much about what goes on inside other people's heads. But I'm just guessing that's what it is, you know, it's some kind of atonement. Yeah, but it is clearly not that they want to stop these deaths. If they wanted to stop these deaths, or at least to impact them severely, or at least non-trivially, there's a way they could do it right now. They could not participate in contagion. Look at uh, when Bud Dwyer killed himself. It was, uh, for those of you who don't know, he was a politician who shot himself on TV, you know, live TV at a press conference. Uh, the organization, the news, or the local news organization that was covering his resignation speech in which he killed himself, uh, during which he killed himself, didn't uh, turn the camera away or fade to black. They broadcast it. And then, uh, as it happened, and then later at the 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock news or whatever it was. So once when it happened live, they didn't shield their eyes from the events un unfolding before them. Um, and then they showed it during the, the proper news hour. They did the, the live one once, because it only happened once, and then the reporting on it later that day, they did it only once. And they got some criticism for that, and their defense, quite appropriately, was, what are we going to say, a public official killing himself at a press conference during which he's uh, resigning because of his conviction for his corruption isn't news? No, it's news, but they didn't sensationalize it. They didn't shield their eyes from what was happening. They didn't pretend that they're not going to show you the brutal reality of what's going on. But they also didn't do like, say, on September 11th, where, you know, the media shows the plane crashing, they put it on a loop. Let's see that loop one more time. Oh, God, look at all those people who died. Oh, it must be terrible. Sponsors, are you paying attention? It must be terrible in there. God, can we zoom in on that? Look at the people jumping. Can we replay that clip? Look at them jumping. Oh, it's so sad. Or, you know... Um, they like, to, they like to watch the police pursuits. They like to see it end when the guy gets out with his gun and the cops get out with their guns. And then everybody's got guns pointing at each other. And then the moment shooting happens, they go, oh no, pull back, pull back. Oh, we can't watch it. So tragic and graphic. Oh, we're so sorry, America. We didn't mean to show that to you. We only wanted to show you everything except for that because we care. No, it is just a game. It is news. You shouldn't run away from it if you want to be a professional, competent journalist. Show what really happens. You don't have to sensationalize it, but you don't have to shield your eyes and run away from it either and, and make this grand pretense. A person uh, taking up arms and uh, engaging government officials to kill them is news. That is a story. The fact that he uh, shoots a police officer and it's, it is news. The fact that a police officer shoots that guy is news. And whatever the frame is when you're looking at it is what it is, just like with Budge Wire. You don't shield your eyes from the evils in the world because they're hard to look at. But you don't have to sensationalize them either, like you did on 9-11. Play that loop again. Let's watch those people jumping out. Oh, that must be so scary and tragic and so sad. Whew, I need to renegotiate my contract. Look at my ratings today. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, it's so sad. Or when uh, the Pope was going to die, it's news. And you had that producer in the background, if you remember when, uh, when it was about, when he wasn't dead yet. And she's like, hello, Pope dead, Pope dead. You know, like, it's not a, you shouldn't be excited about it. But they are, because it's their business to be in, it, it's their job to sensationalize people's deaths these days. Not to just report on some newsworthy event that is happening in all of its, its detail, uh, you know, without sensationalizing, it, it, their job is to sensationalize it. Now, this produces in mass killers something called contagion. It's not exclusive to them. I mean, this happens with suicides and whatever. But the uh, the contagion is that you know, person sees someone do something else, they want to partake of that uh, for whatever reason. I'll put a link to some stuff below that you can read on it. I don't want to uh, drag on too long. But what you now have. Uh, is a competition between people would be mass shooters, mass killers, where they want to one up or compete or be part of that culture, uh, precisely because they know it will bring them the fame that they desire. It'll bring them their infamy. They talk about it ad nauseum. Uh, you know, you don't have to be a rocket surgeon to listen to these people talk about. I'm, the reason I'm doing this is I want to hurt people in a way that is going to make me famous. And the media happen, uh, eagerly obliges. They've got, you know, some of the scripts are already pre-written, just waiting for something to happen so they can fill in the, it's like a form, fill in the details. They've got all their list of adjectives. The brutal, bloody, violent, oh, 
slang happen? You know, they, they have that thing they do with their, their voice. Uh, Paul Azan is really annoying with this. The brutal rape! Or Nancy Grace, they found semen! You know, she's like, they found some semen in that corpse! Oh my god! She's like ecstatic about having found semen. I don't know why. <laughs> For whatever reason, she is. So let's just drop this pretense that the media cares at all about this. It's their bread and butter. If they cared about it, they would not uh, take part in making these people uh, as infamous as they do. They would report on it, just like with the Budgewire thing. It is news. It did, in fact, happen. Here is what, in fact, happened. We're not going to glamorize it. We're not going to sensationalize it. We're not going to tabloidize it. It happened. All right, next story. That's not what the media does. They want wall-to-wall-to-wall -to -wall -to -wall coverage, and they want it to be as bloody and as gory as possible uh, when it's happening. And then, when they get it precisely what they want, when you know, that's why they have their cameras trained on it, that's when they cut away and, and have this... I'm so sorry to my viewers that you had to see that. I mean, it was completely unforeseeable to us that a guy with a gun running from the cops would have been involved in something with violence and the cops. That's why we had to cut away at the last moment. It was just so tragic. Is it time to renegotiate my contract? It's just complete nonsense. Uh, we should stop calling these people journalists. They're actors who are pretending to be journalists. And, you know, they're doing whatever they can to keep up the thinnest possible veneer, the, 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 a patina of the thinnest possible veneer, so that way you can engage in the suspension of disbelief and nod knowingly, going, oh yes, you're a journalist, I, you're totally a journalist, and not a glorified actor. You, they take voice lessons for a reason, y'all. So there's no relationship between the steps they want and the outcomes that they produce. But they're very happy to have sensible gun laws, sensible regulation imposed on gun owners. <clears throat> So here is a test. Contagion is a thing. It's demonstrated time and time again. The murderers who are engaging this to get the attention of the media, which the media are waiting in the wings to give them at the earliest opportunity they possibly can, in the goriest detail while having the pretense of, we didn't want to sensationalize that. It's just completely incidental. Our bad. But we keep doing it. Anyway, uh, let, let's, per let's just suppose that we decide to have some sensible regulations that make it a felony, you know, the th kinds of things they want to do to gun owners, to make it a felony, or at least a very serious criminal offense, uh, like a gross misdemeanor maybe, or something, uh, for you to participate in contagion. Now, of course, they're going to resist that with all of their might, because that would infringe on something they care about, namely their, their uh, bottom line, their ability to make money, which is what they really care about at the end of the day. It's all they really care about at the end of the day, but putting it off to the side. Of course they're not going to accept that. Now, why is it they should think that other people are going to accept uh, an encroachment on their liberty for a right they care about that the media won't accept from the government uh, with respect to a liberty it cares about? Why, why they should think there would be a difference there is completely mysterious. But nevertheless, they want to argue that if whatever the liberty is produces some bad outcomes, because, you know, liberty is dangerous after all, then that liberty can just be trimmed away a little bit. It's not really that important. I mean, think of the kids, you know. Well, where, where's the media thinking of the kids? This is putting, putting off the argument that <laughs> the left-wing media, at least, uh, supports Planned Parenthood, who is in favor of uh, abortion on demand under all circumstances, uh, no matter how far along in the gestation period you are. That's why they're in favor of partial birth abortion, which, for those of you who don't know, is just like the name implies. The baby's partly delivered and then killed. You know, they shove a tube in the back of the head and suck out his brain so they can pull the rest of it out. Uh, putting that argument off to the side, you know, for people who care so much about life, just look at this one narrow issue. They're, what they do, what they won't do to save these lives, which they claim they want to save, which is to stop sensationalizing these killings, which they adamantly refuse to do because it's not financially advantageous to them to do it. And they're certainly not going to accept a government law, a sensible government law, narrowly tailored, that would make it just a felony for people to sensate for the news media to sensationalize uh, these mass killings. Of course, they're going to resist that because the liberty is more important as it happens than the fact that some people get murdered. And the reason for it is this: the people who get murdered are murdered because they are murderers or would be murderers who choose to do the killing. And the fact that the liberties of people who aren't murderers. Uh, are there and can be enjoyed by non-murderers 
and exploited uh, by treacherous murderers is not an argument to do away with li the liberty. Or if it is, then the media has no objection whatever to having that little felony law that is narrowly tailored to put them in prison when they sensationalize this for profit. I mean, you can't have it both ways. And so the internal consistency of their argument is, no, the fact these people get killed and we have some degree of culpability in it because of the contagion effect which we know about and don't care about because the liberty is more important should run the gamut. The fact that insisting on a fair trial means that some murderers, who, you know, people who have actually killed, will be released and are out there to be released again is not an argument to do away with jury trials. It's not an argument to do away with due process. It's not an argument to do away with lawyers. It's not an argument to do away with uh, prohibitions on unreasonable searches and seizures by which the government engages in unlawful activities uh, to Ill illicitly collect evidence that would be advantageous if adv admitted into a trial to convict a person who has in fact done a, m a murder. No. The fact that these liberties produce some bad outcomes is not an argument to do away with liberties, or to the extent that it is, then uh, I see no reason why it's not equally an argument to do away with all of them, which no one accepts. So that leaves us with the first one. The fact that some bad outcomes happen is not an argument to do away with liberty. After all, liberty is a dangerous thing and can only be uh, exercised in a society of reasonably virtuous people. Only, only the unvirtuous require masters. All right, have a great day.